Hello guys, I'm back. My name is Sandeep. I'm a physics faculty at Ask Titans and uh, we are going to continue our chapter, uh, which is light, right? And we have already seen some concepts of the light, that is the introduction of the light or the reflection about the plane mirror, right? We also know that part too. Then today, today we are going to see one very interesting concept. I told you in the previous session that uh, uh, we are going to see the some mirrors which are going to change your size and shape, right? Plane mirror could not, could not do that. So in this lecture, we are going to see those kind of mirrors, okay? Sure. So let's start. So as I said, yes. Uh, we need those type of mirrors we are, which are going to change shapes and size, right? Good. So let's see. What we are going to cover in this chapter, first of all, mirror formula, then we have concave and convex mirror. As I was saying, these are the mirrors that we are going to use to change the size or shape. Okay. Then what is real and virtual images? We are going to see that. When I use this, what are the different uses of the curved mirrors? Right? That part two. Right? Okay. So Hello. So first of all, what is concave mirror? Here, uh, here I can see some types of concave mirror there. Even if you have the spoon, right? You can do you can do this at your home also, right? Take the spoon, right? Which have very good reflecting surface, right? Normally spoons does not have, but you use a silver spoon or anything like that, they will have very good reflecting reflection actually. Right, you can see there's a spoon or bowl you can take, right? Where you can actually see the reflection. That part is a concave surface. So, whatever reflection you are getting from that will be something like this, right? And this is also the mirror you can see. Can you see that uh, it is becoming inverted image, right? We don't want that obviously in plane mirror. Our head is at the top and our uh, foot at the ground, right? But now, what is happening in this case? Everything is becoming inverted right why because this is not our normal mirror this is called as concave mirrors right okay so uh, in a small diagram of concave mirror it's looks something like that so how to get the concave mirror so consider if i have some sphere right so consider this is a sphere which is totally reflecting right the this whole sphere is a mirror we can say I can do cut one of the part. Suppose cut this part here, right? And silver this portion. So inside portion will be reflecting against Inside means this becomes concave portion, right? And consider for the same sphere, if you could cut another this part, and silver is silvering is done from this side. Right? So obviously, it will look something like this. Right? Our mirror will look like this. Obviously, it is called as concave. You can uh, remember it's like it is just going like into the cave, right? This is a cave, right? And uh, this will the uh, another mirror, another type. So I can say this is concave mirror. And which one is this? Convex mirror, right? Okay. So these two types of mirrors are there. Okay, then now, uh, yes, as we discussed, that this is the concave mirror, right? It's just similar to going into the cave. Therefore, we can say it is a concave mirror. This is how I do remember, right? The mirrors, whether it is concave or convex. So, properties of this mirror are, as yes, you can see here, it is making the inverted image, right? Is it making the inverted image every time? No, it depends on the object or object's position, we can say, where we are going to keep the object on that part, okay? Anyway, we are going to see this part in a little bit of details. Okay. So first of all, let's see some terminologies before moving forward. So now let's talk about the concave here, okay? Let me just get it clear. Now consider, this is the concave mirror. 
we need some terms here, right? So we would understand. Okay. So what is going to happen if I uh, if one parallel ray from any object from any objects comes to this point? Right. We know in plane mirror, what happens in the plane mirror if I draw the plane mirror here? Suppose ray comes like this, or let's make it some inclined. We draw when normal there, right? We studied this in the previous session. If this is angle I, this ray will go like this, right? With the same angle. One is angle of reflection, one is angle of incidence. Both are same. We know that law. We have seen that law, right? According to that, you can say this is how it will work. Similar, now normal, we are going to use the same law here, but what we need is one normal here, right? So normal means what? Perpendicular to the surface. So at this particular point, I can draw the perpendicular like this, right? So if this parallel, uh, parallel ray of light incident here, we will need the reflected ray, which is going to make same angle. So something like this. Consider another array which is coming from this side, right? Again, we will need the normal. Now the normal will look something like this. Initially, it was here like this. This was the normal, right? So normal is always perpendicular to the surface. Means it should make ninety degree angle. Where? Let's see. So consider this is the normal. It should make the ninety degree angle here. Here it also it making the ninety degree angle. Okay. So again, uh, okay, let me draw the right idea there. It will be something like this. Okay, 90 degree we need. So reflected ray. You can see the reflected ray again passing through the same point. So when the parallel beams are coming from the object, remember reflected ray passes through the same point. Okay, so there is one very unique point we got here, let's call this point as focus. This is called as focus, okay? And it is represented by F also, this distance is also represented by F. So distance from, let's call this point as pole. This point is called as pole and F is called as what? I told you it is focus, okay? Then there is one more thing we should remember. Uh, initially, I told you that from the sphere, we are going to get this, uh, mirror, right? So assume, even though mirror is only this part, we can also assume this small sphere is here, right? So it is the imaginary sphere. The center of that sphere is called as C. It is represented by C and this part is represented by R, right? So C is center of curvature. Center of curvature and what is R? It's easy to understand. R will be radius of curvature. C is called as center of curvature. This is called as radius of curvature. Okay. And focus. One more relationship you should remember between R and EF is R will be two times of EF. Okay. Radius of curvature will be double of. So this R is double. If EF is this small EF is let's say 10 centimeter, R will become uh, 20 centimeter. Like that you can remember this thing. Okay, so this is about the concave mirror. I can also draw some diagram for convex mirror too. Right, what we can say this point is pole, let's represent it by P, right? And uh, here the rays will go away like this actually. And uh, they will meet somewhere here. Therefore, if we have to extend those rays, remember this point for on convex mirror, they are actually going away, right? If this is the normal, this is the normal, right? They are coming like this and going away. So we have to extend these lines here up to point EF, we can say. And let's say this is EF. Center of curvature will also be on this side, okay? So there's a case we should remember about the concave and convex. All things are same. Pole is same, focus, EF is focus. Then distance is EF, obviously. Those distances are those are all things are going to remain same. There is no change in that. Okay. Then uh, we also need the sign convention. Sign conventions means what? From this pole, this part is called as axis. 
Similarly, here it is also called as axis, right? Okay. So from the left hand side of the pole, if you want to measure any distance, right? Okay. Left side of the pole or that mirror, we can say, we can call that as we can, we are going to consider those distances as negative. So very simple, I can say for concave mirror, F, F means what? Focus, focus will be negative, right? If you keep any object here, that object distance will also be negative, okay? And right side, convention says right side is positive, right? Therefore, F for this convex mirror becomes what? Positive, right? So what we learned here, very important concept. This is very important concept. Focal focus or focal distance, we can call this as F, as, as focal distance also. That focal distance is negative in case of concave mirror and positive in case of convex mirror, okay? So remember this thing very carefully because we are going to use those concepts in uh, our examples, okay? So, so this is the sign conventions we can say. And uh, also remember one more thing mm, for mirror, whether it could be convex or concave, this side we are going to call it as real, and this side we are going to call it as virtual. Again, here, same this is the real side, this is the virtual side, right? We are seeing in the plane mirror that we uh, image we get is the virtual, right? Because it is inside like that. So, similarly. These are the real and virtual sides. We are going to see where the image, where the actually we are going to get image. Okay. So now I think the basic terminology is clear in the concave mirror part. Okay. So once it is done, let's move to the next part. So these are some mirrors. Obviously, we do not see this type of mirror in our home, right? Our home has the plane mirror, which which is giving you the exact size, not inverted, but upright or erect, we can say, okay. So this is about the concave mirror. Now, image formation is also the one of the important part, okay, for the concave mirror. So here I can see one cool animation there, right? What you can see, this is the concave mirror, like, we you know how to find whether it is concave or convex. If you are going inside, means it is something like going into the cave, that will be concave. Then we have the focus point. You can see the parallel rays are going there. And this is 2F. 2F means what? Center of curvature, right? We know that part too. Good. So now, this white line, white line is representing the object. And that yellow line, you can see, yellow line is sometimes becoming inverted, sometimes on this side, it is straight or erect, right? That actually shows the image, okay? So now look very closely. When the object is uh, in behind this uh, frame of our image, right? Means I can say object is at infinity. Let's say object is at infinity. Then you can see the image is very small and at the focus point, right? Then observe very carefully for the C, when the white object comes at this C point, where this yellow line, yellow lines also come to C, right? right? So simply I can say, when the object is coming from infinite infinity, to our focus or let's say pole. Let's talk about focus. What is happening? Image is running from focus to infinity. Also, I can see I can see one more thing. Only consider infinity to focus point. We are we will talk from focus to pole later. So again, you can observe here when the image is coming from infinity to focus. Sorry, not image. Object is coming from infinity to focus. Image is running from where? focus to infinity, right? Also, you can observe one more thing. Object is, object is size is going to remain same. It is not going to change, obviously. But image, from when it is running from focus to infinity, you can observe that size, yellow color line is increasing, 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 right? So, uh, first of all, when it was at focus, it was very small, even smaller than object. At center of curvature, you can observe, both the sizes are same, right? But it is inverted. And after center of curvature, image started getting magnified, right? Also, we can talk about focus to pole. What is happening? The image goes to the other side. 
right? This side we called it as real side, right? We know that part, and this is virtual side. So can I say when the object goes from focus to center of curvature, what is happening? The uh, image becomes virtual, right? And till that point, till that point, image was real and inverted. After that, it became virtual and uh, virtual line. What we can say? Upright or erect. Okay. So these are the different images formed by the concave mirrors. So let's do one thing. Let's prepare a very good table, right? That table is going to be very useful for you. Let me find the space for that. <clears throat> Okay, chalo. So I'm going to write it here. Mm. Consider first of all, we will consider object where the object is kept. Okay, then we will consider the image. Where is the image? And there, then we are going to say the nature of the image. Nature of the image means whether it is real or inverted, or virtual or upright or uh, greater in size or smaller in size right so consider when the object is at infinity we get the image where we get the image at focus point you can observe that on this animation right when the object is at infinity image is at focus and it is very small you can see right? at the start you cannot even see that object right so i can say it is inverted but uh, again first of all let's write real it is on the real side then inverted and diminished diminished means small size remember that part diminished okay now when the object is between infinity and center of curvature observe it very carefully what i am saying when the object is at infinity and center of curvature what is happening you can see the image it is running where from focus to center of curvature right so let's try focus to center of curvature c how is the image uh, still it is small real yes real is, it is real inverted also but again small so i can say diminished simple now let's see when the object comes on to exactly on c what happens at the c image also comes on c right image also comes on c and what is the size uh, first of all let's write real it is real right real and also inverted what about size you can observe very carefully right it is of the same size look at the animation there when the object reaches at c point the size of the image is almost same to that object right simple now see what happens when what is happening when the image is from uh, c to f tell me what will happen yes image is running away from the c so can i say c to infinity yes image is real that's correct inverted yes that is also correct what is the size size is changing size is becoming more than now it is greater so image size of the image is greater here so i can say it is magnified magnified means bigger size diminished means smaller size and uh, once it re once it will reach let's say on focus image will go to the infinity right again we can say real inverted and it will be very very big highly magnified you can say magnified right so all these cases you can see image is real real means also i can say this is in front of mirror in front of mirror and virtual virtual means i can say it is behind the mirror okay so these are the things we should write then so one last point remaining that is focus to pole only in this case we know that image is becoming virtual right so i can say it is behind the mirror behind mirror image distance is behind the mirror and uh, is it real no now this is virtual is it inverted or erect or upright tell me right you can observe that and uh, yes you can see it is upright right or you erect, erect you can see and uh, whether it is magnified or same size or diminished yes you can see it is magnified right so this table is very important for us right remember 
then we are going to talk about the lenses uh, in next session i will tell you one thing that the concave mirrors table we can use this same table for convex lenses also mirrors lens mirrors means we know reflection lenses means we know the specs specs has some lenses right okay like that so so uh, remember this part and when we are seeing the lens or uh, lenses then you will tell me whether uh, what i have uh, i'm telling you right now that this table particular table we can copy the same table for the convex lenses concave mirror convex lenses table will be same okay how that we will uh, see in the next session okay lenses session okay so these are some image formation of the concave mirror and as i said this table is very very important for us if you want to solve the numericals on this mirrors okay so how the numericals will appear they will tell us that let's say object is kept at the center of curvature where will be the image what will be the nature of the image you should able to remember this part right then sometimes they will only tell you that uh, let's say focus of this mirror is 10 cm and object is kept at 15 cm you should think on that and uh, no you should know that where the object is kept if the focus is 10 m this is the focus and object consider you keep the object here at 15 cm what you can do you will understood that object is kept between what center of curvature to focus so you should remember the table if the object is kept between center of curvature and focus image will appear at center of curvature to infinity it will run away right simple object is coming towards the focus image is running from the focus simple so also image should be what real inverted magnified diminished whatever you should be able to tell using this table only okay very simple so this is about the concave mirrors and image formation now where this concave mirrors are used right here uh, obviously you can see one thing that every time we are getting the inverted image so if we are getting the inverted image right is it useful is this mirror uh, useful in any way because consider you don't want this type of image no? when you are setting your hairs you cannot use this mirror right but there is one option right one option one case we can see where we are getting the upright image and magnified also right which one focus to plane so yes we can keep the object in the focus here in this diagram you can see in both the cases objects are away from the focus but you keep the object very very closer to the mirror what we will get we will get the image on opposite side like this right it will be erect upright and uh, magnified also and magnified means we can say it is zoom it is kind of zoom object right zoomed image right so we can use this so property of the concave mirror right we can also use the inverted object sometimes but we have to put some more mirrors or again lenses there to make it upright again right so we can use that too okay so normally where we use the concave mirrors right there you can see in the headlights of the um, or first we can see in dentist right this is the spoon type material right spoon type handle we can say and it has some mirror there and uh, using that mirror we can look at the teeth so obviously we uh, needs the teeth to become little bit of bigger right zoom we can say we cannot use the mobile to zoom it right so we use a mirror this is a concave mirror you can say then uh, in headlights headlights of the car also you can use this mirror it right? obviously we don't headlights are not going to we don't care whether it image is inverted or not we are not using that mirror to look at the other vehicles right so headlights yes you can use then a concave mirror uh, is used in this torch right okay these are the different uses of the concave mirrors we can say okay so then let's talk about the convex mirror so this is the spoon now we know uh, which one is the concave part 
inside is the concave part, right? And other opposite part will be convex part, right? So same girl is standing there in front of that spoon or bowl. We can say now you can see it is the erect image or upright image, right? Okay. So this is also the convex mirror which you can find onto the on the roads, right? Or in malls also, you can find these mirrors in malls also. And the simple diagram we can in the simple diagram we can show this mirror like this. Very easy. Okay. So inside part should be silvered, silvered, right? And uh, therefore, I can say this part will be reflective. Very simple, and it should come like this, right? You can see in this mirror, so it is just coming outside, like right. And the concave mirror, it was going inside, right? This was spoon. Obviously, we know the spoon, right? The front part of the spoon is going inside, right? And uh, this part is coming outside. Therefore, we can say it is just like a convex mirror. Right? Normally, we cannot see the reflection mirror of uh, spoon. It needs to be very reflective surface, and only we can see the reflection there. Okay, sure. So let's see. Um, if you do remember, we have already marked that pole radius of curvature, focal length, right? So where is the focal length of this of this mirror? Okay. Let's try that again. Yes, here you can see. This is our convex mirror. Rays are coming, but rays are not stopping here, or uh, they are not going uh, in onto the real part. Right? They are going away from the mirror. So actually what we have done in this case, we have taken this rays backward like this. Same thing we have done in the plane mirrors case also, right? We have to extend those reflected ray. That reflected ray will meet at particular point and that point we can call it for the, call as a focus for this convex mirror. Okay, so what is the difference between concave and convex? In concave case, we are getting the focus point on the left side. On the real side, or therefore we can say it is a negative, right? Because the left side is a negative. That is our sign convention, right? And uh, what about the convex mirror? In case of convex mirror, we are getting into the right side. So I can say focus point is positive in this case. Okay. So this is something we should note down. Okay. One more thing about the sign convention, let me write it here. If this is the axis, if image is kept, oh, sorry, object is kept here, and consider where we get the image in this case, we know this is kind of image, right? We have already seen the image formation for the concave mirror. Now, I can say this is HO. HO means height of object. HI means height of image. So let me write it here now. Mm. Yes, I will write it here. H O means height of object. What is H I? H I means height of image. Okay. okay. Again, if it is upward, remember in upward, we can take positive sign and downward. Downward relative to what? Relative to our axis, we can say. We can consider it as a negative sign. So upward is positive, downward will be negative. Very simple to understand, right? Okay. So let's move to the convex mirror. Now we know uh, our the terminologies. That is pole is there, then uh, focus point is there. Radius of curvature must be there somewhere, right? So all those things, focus is where? Focus is positive in this case, right? Now we know the terminologies. Let's see how the image is formed for this convex mirror. We have prepared a very big table for concave mirror, right? As I said, it is very important. Similarly, can you do it for the convex mirror? Let's see. So now, there is no animation in this case. Why? Because, remember, convex mirror will only give you one position. There are not a lot of uh, different positions. There's only one position. Wherever you, you keep the object, from infinity to focus, pole, or between anywhere, but between center of curvature or pole or focus, doesn't matter. 
there is only one formation image formation we get so object image and nature these are the three things right keep it anywhere from infinity to pole image is always going to be behind the mirror and nature of that image is always it will be always virtual right this is our virtual side and this one is real side right we know that part so image will always be virtual and it will always be upright remember it will never get inverted okay simple we have seen in that uh, this diagram also right here you can see upright image it all is standing uh, straight right and the virtual upright and Mm, remember, it will be a diminished image. Diminished means what? It will be always smaller size. It will always be a smaller size image. Okay. So this is the only image formation in case of convex mirrors we have. So we don't have to remember a lot of things in this one. But concave mirror is the important thing. You should memorize whole table. Okay, good. Okay, so where we can use the convex mirror now? It is obviously giving you the upright image, right? Straight image. Uh, so it is very useful. You can say, right? So where we do use here? You can see our car's mirror or bike's mirror. Bike's mirror is a convex mirror, right? Bike's mirror is a convex mirror. In that we can see the car. We cannot use the concave. Why? Because we don't want the inverted image. We want the only original image there, right? Like that. Also in malls, also if you observe, here you can see this person is clicking the photo of that mirror, right? Okay. In malls, also this concave mirror, sorry, convex mirrors are used. Why use the convex? Why not plane mirror? Right? Now, convex mirror, you can see in this mirror. Almost all of the portion of that shop is getting covered. You can see almost everything there, right? So shop owner can sit at one particular position and arrange the mirror according to that, and he will have the view of whole shop there, right? So this is the use. In plane mirror, if you uh, attach plane mirror, the shop owner will only see himself. He will not able to see the whole shop, right? So that's why we are using the convex mirror in the mall instead of the plane mirrors okay then on the traffic also on the ro uh, roads you can use this mirror obviously why because it is going to provide you a lot of oh, coverage there you can see a lot of things in the one mirror only okay then also you can see that mirrors are uh, sorry images images are very small compared to actual sizes even in the car's mirror you know that we can see the car uh, which are behind uh, of our car and right? those sizes are very small you can see the image size of size of this car is very small right okay. obviously we cannot see the bigger size if same size uh, if the convex mirror would have provided the same size the whole mirror would, uh, would be filled by only one car so we could have only seen the one car right that is not acceptable we should be able to see all the things, right? But one more important point in this mirror is should be noted that you could also there is one caution written on the mirror, right? You can go check your bike's mirror or car's mirror, right? The caution says that objects which appear, objects which appear in the mirror are closer than they appear, right? So this is the caution written on every mirror, every bike's mirror or car's mirror, right? So next time, go outside and check that. So again, caution says that objects uh, in the mirror, sorry, image in the mirror is uh, nearer than they appear. Simple, so what is the meaning? You can now here, if you're sitting in the driver's position, you can see this car is very, very uh, behind, right? But it's not the case, right? If you look, back that car will be very closer to you okay that's why they have written that portion otherwise we will think that okay that car is very behind so you can stop it here no that car will collide you so always remember that one portion 
So you could you are good to go for the driving. Okay. So these are some uses of the convex mirrors. Okay. Shall sure. now we have a uh, formula for this mirrors. What formula? It is called as mirror formula. That mirror formula is going to give us that where is the position of the object. Whether we are getting in front of of the object means real image or virtual image, all the thing we can calculate using this mirror formula, right? For this mirror formula, what is needed? Now I can see this is the concave mirror. Uh, focus point is also there, right? If the focus point is there, then object is kept somewhere here, right? So object distance. Remember very carefully. Right? This point should be noted. Very important points. We already know about the focus, right? So object, we write it here. Object distance, it's called as u, right? Okay. Image distance. So where are you, where you are getting the image somewhere here? So image distance from where? From this pole, right? Here you can see image distance is how much? Image distance is b. Very simple. Then focus, focal length, you could call it as focal length or focus distance, it is EF. Or radius of curvature, you already know this one, right? So they may give you the radius of curvature also. Uh, that is, let's say, represented by R. And we also know the relation between R and EF. R is equal to EF. So very simple, if they, instead of giving the focus point or focal length, what they will say? That uh, the focus, let's say, radius of curvature of this mirror is 10 centimeter or 20 centimeter. You should be able to find out the focal length. How to find that? Just divide it by two, right? Because we know radius of curvature is double of the focal length. Okay. Now we know all these things. Then there is a very small, simple, sweet formula for this. Okay. This is mirror formula. I have written it here, right? This is a magnification and mirror formula. We are going to write both the formulas in here. So mirror formula, mirror formula is one by F is equal to one by V plus one by U. So this is our formula. Very simple, right? Okay. But remember one thing very carefully that we should put these values of here, V and U using the sign conventions also, right? So if this U is on the left side, what we have to consider that u will be negative, not positive, right? Simple. If the v is also v is getting on this side, we are getting v. Yes, it should be negative. If they say concave mirror, then this focus will be negative. If they say convex mirror, this focus should be what? Positive. We have seen this thing in the first slide only. Okay. So this is the mirror formula. And there is another formula uh, for this spherical mirror, which is magnification. Magnification means what? Now, already we have seen that mirror image do what? It could also enlarge the image. It could make image very bigger or it could be smaller also, right? Okay. So simple thing, uh, we have magnification in our phones also nowadays. When you use the camera, there is an option to zoom, right? So you can zoom that uh, image or object we can say, right? When you are clicking the photos, you can zoom it. Okay, so that is nothing but the magnification. 2x means you must have seen something 2x, 3x, 4x. 2x means what? You're getting the double sized image or triple sized image, four times image, right? So there is simple formula for that. Image size is becoming greater, right? So I can say height of image upon height of object. Very simple. So magnification is what? Height of image upon height of object. There is one more formula we should remember. That is minus V upon U. V is what? V is image distance. What is U? U is object distance. And remember minus should uh, minus sign should also be there. Okay. So if we know this two formulas, one is the mirror formula, one by F is equal to one by V plus one by U. And another one is the magnification height of image upon height of object. If you know these two formulas, then uh, we can solve the, all the numericals problems on this, right? So what they are, they will ask you in the question that uh, image position is, sorry, object position that is U will be given. 
they will ask where will be the image. So you have to calculate what? You have to calculate V in that case. Also, they will ask you whether the image becomes smaller or, uh, or greater, right? Or whether it is becoming double or half like that. How to find that using the magnification, right? We will solve one question on this one. So that will clear your concept, right? Okay. So these are the two formulas for the spherical mirrors. Okay. So, so this is the whole theory part of the mirrors. So plane mirrors we have seen in the previous session. In today's session, we have seen the very nice mirrors. Those are uh, concave mirror, convex mirror. Then uh, we also know that there are different properties for concave mirror. What we have to do? We have to remember that whole table, right? That will be very useful for us for solving the numericals. And uh, convex mirror has only one condition. So it is very easy to remember. Okay. Then uh, we also know the formulas. Mirror formula is what? One upon F is equal to one upon U plus one upon V. And magnification is what? Magnification means height of image divided by height of object. Very simple to understand. And another formula we attach to that is equal to what? Minus V upon U. Okay. Good. So let's try to solve some questions on this sector. In this session, mirror session, you can say. Name the type of mirror used as a back view mirror on car, in car, you can say, right? So we already seen that. Which mirror are those? Those are convex mirror, right? Why convex mirror? Because we cannot use concave because concave is making inverted image, right? And a magnified image, uh, if you want a erect image, right? Upright image, then it will be a magnified and we don't need the magnified image of the behind cars right you're not going to check the whatever is in the car we just wanted to know yes car is coming so image should be very small but i also told you one caution there what is the caution that objects look in the mirror are closer than they appear okay good Chalo, let's move to the next one the image formed by the camera and uh, simple microscope are respectively so remember camera clicks the real image actually and sim uh, microscope clicks the virtual image. Microscope actually doesn't click, but we can see the virtual image there. Okay, that all depends. Uh, actually, the microscope has some lenses. So we haven't studied the lenses yet, but just remember right now that real and virtual should be our answer. Okay. Then what is the angle of incidence of a ray if the reflected ray is at an angle 90 degree to incident ray? So this is actually the question of the mm, plane mirror case. What they are saying, angle of incidence we want to calculate means I, let's say we want to calculate I. What they have given, reflected ray is at an angle of 90 degree to incident ray. So simple, draw one normal here. Then we will need one incident ray. And we know that whatever angle incident ray is making, same angle reflected ray will also make. Okay. And they have given us one condition that if the reflected ray is at an angle 90 degree to incident ray, means this is our reflected ray. And this is our incident ray, right? This angle in between these two is how much? 90 degree. And we also know that these two angles are also same, right? So can I say theta plus theta is equal to how much? 90 degree. And theta is what? Theta is anyway up our angle of incidence, right? That's what we want to calculate. So two theta will be how much? 90 degree. Theta will be 45 degree. Very simple answer, right? Good. Sure. So let's. Right, this question now, this is based on our uh, mirror, very important question, okay? So, 10 mm long all pin is placed vertically in front of concave mirror. All pin means so uh, our normal pin, which we use to stick the flyers or something, or you can consider it as like a shape of nail or something, right? Like this. So this is the all pin, okay? It is kept in front of concave mirror and five millimeter long image of the all pin is formed at 30 centimeter in front of the mirror. Okay, so let's see. First of all, remember in physics, 
whenever there is possible, try to draw the diagrams. Diagrams will hear your concepts very clearly. So, this is our concave mirror. Let's say this is the uh, plane. Okay. So, 10 mm. 10 mm means what they have given me height of the object. So, HO height of the object is given as 10 mm. It is placed in front of the concave mirror. In front means this side. Okay. Then, what is the size of the image? We are getting size at only. HI is equal to 5 mm. This is the size. Okay. And this image is formed at 30 centimeter in front of mirror. In front means this side 30 centimeter. Let's say this is 30 centimeter. And we are getting some image like this. Right. So in front of mirror, obviously, you should remember all those things which we have learned on the table. In front of mirror means real image, right? Real image is always inverted on front in front of mirror we get the only inverted image right so 30 centimeter we can say right so what they have given me v v is 30 centimeter or remember i can say it is minus 30 why minus 30 because it is left side to the mirror or in front of the mirror okay good then so we have HO and HI. What we can actually calculate from this? Let's try. So we know one formula. There are two formulas actually. One first is for focal length. We call it as mirror formula. One upon V, one upon F is equal to one upon V plus one upon U. One more magnification is HI upon HU, HU is equal to minus V by U. These are two formulas we have. Okay. So let's try to solve this now. Okay, we also have to give the negative sign here also, right? So let's change this formula if you get here. We already given the negative sign to minus V by U. Also give it to H I upon H O. Okay, so let's try to solve this question now. Now EM is becomes or anyway, we can keep the positive sign as it is. We can say in image is inverted. Okay, let's see how we can do this now. Oh uh, yes, H object means H object object is kept like this where we don't know. Okay, so and high image is downward. I also told you upward will be mm, positive, right? And downward will be negative. So this will be positive. This will be negative. So I can say this is minus five mm. So let's substitute HI upon HO and I also know formula minus V upon U. So substitute all the values with signs also. So HI is how much? Minus 5. HO is how much? 10 is equal to minus sign is there. V is minus 30. Let's calculate the U. Now here, this minus minus will get cancelled. One half I can say. So this becomes one half is equal to minus 30 upon U. If you calculate this, you are getting u is equal to minus 60. Right? Why minus sign? Because already we keep the object at on the left side only, right? So if this is the image, we are getting object somewhere here. Okay, so this is 60 centimeter. What they are asking us to calculate? The focal length of the mirror, right? So for focal length, we have one formula there, this one. Okay, we also need what? We also need the sign conventions. So we got the U here. Put it in box like this. Here we all have, we, we also have V. We can calculate here, right? Hello, let's try this one now. So I can say one by F is equal to one by V plus one by U. So what is the value of V? Minus 30. Let's do it here. Can I say minus one by 30? That's right. U is minus 60. Substitute it here. Okay. Sure. So what we have to do? First, we have to make this denominator equal. How to do that? For that, I have to multiply this part by 2, denominator by 2, and numerator by 2. Okay. So I will get this as minus 2 divided by 60 
in minus 1 divided by 60. Now the numerator, denominator is same. I can say it is minus 3 by 60 or let's say 1 by minus 20. So 1 by f I got as 1 by minus 20. So what is the value of f now? f will become minus 20. Okay, so is there an option minus 20? Yes, sorry. Yes, so this is the option that is minus 20. So this is how you can solve all the numericals on this type of questions. Okay, so remember, once you know the concepts, formulas and sign conventions are also very important, right? So left, right or upward, downward, you should know this formula. So EM is HI upon HO, don't make it minus HI upon HO like this. HI is height of image and upon height of object. Okay, so, so good. So today we have completed this second session on the mirrors, on K mirror, convex mirror, right? What are their uses? Where we can use them? Then uh, what is the formula? What is the problems? What new? How numericals we can solve? Like that part. Okay. In, the, in tomorrow's session, not tomorrow, maybe in the next session. In next session, we are going to see about the lenses, right? Similar to mirrors. Now we know mirrors are reflecting things, right? And lenses are not reflecting, they're actually refracting. We will see that what is the refraction there. Okay. Also that part. So anyway, so if you do have any questions on this mirror part, whether it is plane mirror, spherical mirrors, right? Do post them on forum. Try to solve as many questions, numericals on this mirror formula and magnification. You could get the idea of that, right? And yes, sure. So anyway, we'll stop here today. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.